Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes and we love design. We do and today we'll be exploring the most amazing and extraordinary architectural projects I've ever seen. I just recently came across it when I was searching for retro, retro futurism yeah. and I totally understand why it popped up there. <laughs> it is the Palais Bull. Yeah, something. Or Bubble Palace yeah. <laughs> by Hungarian architect Antti Lovag. Let's get into it. Yeah. Antti Lovag uh, was a truly innovative architect who specialized in organic architecture. He was born in 1920 and studied architecture in Paris during the peak of functionalism. Uh, but around 1960, he began to express strong and radical opinions against the contemporary architecture consisting of like cubes and straight lines. Mm. Uh, he, for instance, said, Whether for economic reasons or lack of technical solutions, human beings have uh, confined themselves to cubes full of dead ends and angles that impede our movement and break our uh, harmony. Mm. Uh, the straight line is an aggression against nature. And it, it is kind of true, yeah, because you, you don't find any straight, straight lines no, in the nature. No, no, no. Not at all. Um, and Lovag had a fascination for circles and spheres uh, for their versatile, lightweight and durable nature. And according to him, they were the most material efficient form of them all. Hmm. Yep. Lovag's most famous and iconic project is the Bubble Palace yeah. in the French Riviera near Cannes. The six level uh, 1200 square meter or 13,000 square feet mm -hmm. mansion is looking over the Mediterranean mm -hmm. Sea. It was built with no fixed plan or even blueprints. <laughs> yeah. It's mainly the result of Luvog's passion. He wanted to do it all spontaneously. Mm. And the result being organic shapes yeah. perfectly adapted for the space. Yeah. He saw architecture as a form of play, spontaneous, yeah. joyful, and full of surprise. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a common way to see it. <laughs> uh, he had some controversial approaches to his projects. Huh? He told potential clients, mm -hmm. I have three conditions I'm obliged to respect. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to be finished. And I don't know how much it's going to cost. Yeah, that's that could be a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. He have also said, I've always worked with advent adventurers who wanted something mm. that didn't exist. And with these in mind, he did not get many clients, sadly. <laughs> no. Not many people are that wealthy and open-minded visionaries. No, obviously not. <laughs> And the Bubble Palace was under construction between 1975 and 1989, so, like, so 14 years. Mm. <laughs> and that's a long time, uh, but it's totally understandable. It is. Uh, he began with an iron rebar network that enabled him to visualize the interior spaces. Uh, he then uh, cast a layer of concrete over the, um, this metal template. Mm. Uh, um, the commissioner was Pierre Bernard, a French industrialist, uh, but he never came to live there. Um, and after Bernard's death, it was bought by the fashion designer Pierre Cadin in 1991. Mm. And he did not live there either. <laughs> but of course, he held parties and fashion events there. Mm -hmm. And it's said that Cadin rented out the place for uh, commercials and events, like for approximately $33,000 a day. Mm. So it was expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the palace consists of 29 mm. rooms, 10 bedrooms and 11 bathrooms, <laughs> several circular swimming pools, mm -hmm. waterfalls, okay. exotic gardens, and even a 500 seat open air amphitheater <laughs> overlooking the Mediterranean. What do you need an amphitheater for? Yeah, it's Perhaps for these like big events than uh, like yeah, fashion but, events. Uh, yeah, but Cardan didn't build it. No. So did why not. why is it there? 
It's crazy. That's strange. Mm -hmm. The domes also had skylights inserted into the tops, so they uh, and they could be opened up, so you could access the roof. Oh, that's great! That is great. <laughs> yeah, and Lovag also designed, decorated, and furnished all the interiors uh, with help from other contemporary artists. Mm -hmm. And he did not create the uh, space offered after specific rooms like living room or kitchen. He instead installed the furniture according to the rhythm of the people uh, that, that lived in the house. Uh, and nobody did. No, nobody <laughs> read that. And to be honest, I don't really get this. No, it sounds a bit weird. crazy, yeah. but it was probably never really intended uh, as a house to actually live in. It Maybe was not. more like this mm. big mansion, and mm. Uh, mm. yeah, because you'd want a mansion and not live in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, that's a bit strange, Silly. perhaps. <laughs> yeah, but as you may uh, have noticed already, most of the furniture is also circular. Uh, the beds, the sofas, the tables, yeah, like almost everything yeah. is... Love uh, the beds. Yeah, the beds You can are... sleep in any position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to look out the window, yeah. you can... Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, and take a closer look at these amazing lounge chairs designed by, uh, yeah, Claude Prevost. Perhaps, Maybe. yeah. They at least I, I don't know how to pronounce his no, name. No, but they name, are but the they most are, amazing. Yeah, they are. The furniture in there. Yeah, I would love one of these. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Bubble Palace mm -hmm. has been on the list of uh, historical monuments yeah. of the French Ministry of Culture since 1999, hmm. and I understand why. Yeah, yeah. In 2017, hmm. it was listed for sale actually <laughs> yeah. with an asking price of. Uh, 350 million euro oh. and that is 420 million dollars that's a lot of money yes <laughs> uh, and it could not find a buyer uh, obviously huh? why i would because, love to if i had yeah but i mean where did they come up with that uh, sum of money I don't know. <laughs> uh, it was one of the highest asking prices ever for a european property yeah actually hmm. After Cardin's uh, death in 2020, it's not decided what's going to happen mm. with the Bubble Palace. But hopefully it will be open to the public to yeah. visit. I would love to. Yeah, it should be a museum or something. <laughs> it yeah. really should. It seems like it can still be rented, but I don't know for <laughs> how much, but it's probably way too much for most people. Yeah, I mean, who can pay like 30,000 a day <laughs> or so? <laughs> yeah. I don't um, know. No. But that's all for today. What did you think about the Bubble Palace? <laughs> Do you agree with us that uh, it's one of the coolest architectural projects uh, or, or don't you like it? Well, hmm? Tell us in Tell the comments. Us. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.